Hello world and welcome to my first Blender game video tutorial series part 6. In this part we're going to add some animation to our game. And this tutorial will be in three parts. The first part will be the setup of our armature. The second part will be the setup of our walk. And the third part will be the setup of our jump animations. But before we do that, I want to show you my splash screen, just so you know that I'm using Blender 2.6 revision 42137. And this is actually a, a version of Blender 2.61 beta. And you can see that in this version, we now have some nice collision bounds around our meshes that tell us what are the collision bounds in our physics tab. And what is really great is that you can see how, how affecting an object in object mode is different than editing the object on object mode. Well, you don't really see it with, with, with a box, but if I set it to cylinder, you can see that it is quite different. Okay. So, let us start the tutorial. First of all, I want to take this armature that I have already created and parent my mesh to it so that whenever this armature will be affected by an animation, my mesh will follow. Now, I won't teach you how to create an armature, how to rig it, how to skin it, and how to animate it in this video, but I should do it in 6.5. So first of all, I want to quit my camera view, where I am, here I am, go in orthographic and press Z to enter in wireframe mode, and I want to move my armature so that it will, it will fit my player. And once the armature is cor correctly placed to that each of the bones fits the player, I want to select the player select the armature and press Ctrl P and select with automatic weight. And once I do this, you can see that whenever I move the armature, the characters follow. And if I play an animation by creating a dope sheet, then a graph editor, then changing the action, the dope sheet to be an action editor, and choosing one of the actions I have already made for example, walk, you can see that the armature is moving and that the mesh follows, which is really great. And since we're talking about that, be sure when you start the game engine that you still have this armature modifier on the top of the on top of your armature stack. You don't want to apply it because it won't make uh, the armature useful in the game engine if this is applied. And you want to, you want that this modifier will be the only modifier on your stack because other modifier, modifier will slow down your game and will cause bugs in it. So. Now that it is set up, I want to choose my jump, jump animation and just go at frame zero, oh, zero, so that I have a basic start, a basic position to my player to start. And I'll select the armature, move it up a bit. And if I were to start the game right now, by going to texture mode and pressing P, you would know, uh, you would know that no matter if I press on the A, D or spacebar, my character isn't moving. And the reason for that is that right now our player is parented to the armature, and since the armature is not moving, the, the player can't move anymore. So all the logic bricks we have put onto our player, and we'll change this, this name of the subject to be player mesh. All the logic bricks we have made on this player mesh are, have no, no utilities in the game engine. So we need to move them to something that will control the player, and this could be the armature itself. However, an armature really isn't the best object to put controls and, and run physics simulation on, 
So what we'll do is that we will create a box by pressing Shift A and selecting Q. And this box will control how my player is being affected by physic in the game engine. And it will also control all the simulations. In fact, the mesh of our player will be only there for the visual, the armature of our player will be only there for the animation, and the box will be there for everything else. Okay, but right now the box is a bit on the way and really visible and prevent us to seeing our player. So what I'll do, I'll go in my object panel here, and down into display, I'll change the time from texture to be wire. So now we, we will only see the wire of the box and we will be able to see our player inside of it. Which is really great. And also, the armature is currently hidden by the player. So what I want to do is to select my armature and press X-ray button under the display under object mode. And what it will do is that I am now able to see my armature no matter where I am in my viewport. However, it is a bit intrusive and I don't really see my player. So what I'll do, I'll select, I'll change the type from texture to wire and now I will be able to see my player. Okay, so as I was telling you, now this box right here will control everything that will happen to my player. So what I'll do, I'll change the name from cube to player hitbox and I'll scale it down on the x-axis so that it fits my player correctly. Okay, something like that. Then I will select the armature, so the shift select the box, control P and set parent to object. Oh, something is wrong. Select the box. Armature, box, control P, object. Why is there a loop in parent? Oh, okay. I was selecting the wrong box. I was selecting the collision bound of my player. So I need to select the armature, the player hitbox, and then I can press control P. And now I can move only the hitbox, oh, only the hitbox, and it will control my player, my armature, that will control my mesh. Okay, and right now we want to take all these logic bricks that we had on our player mesh and move them onto our player R or player hitbox. And I'll do that by selecting player hitbox, shift select my player mesh, object, game, copy logic brick, object, game, replace properties. And now my hitbox have all the properties and I'll, all the logic bricks than my player mesh had. And since we don't need these properties into our player mesh and those it and those bricks, I'll just delete them to save space on memory. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. And now if I were to start the game, oops, you can see that my box is still in the on the way. And to prevent that, I will go in my physics tab and change it to invisible. Also, since we're in the physics tab, we want to change the physics type to be dynamic because we want our box to be able to fall and be affected by physics. And we want to select collision bounds, set it to box and a margin of 0.5. And now, if I start the game, you can see that my player is going in this direction at an incredible speed. Incredible speed. And the reason for that is that my hit my hit player hitbox is a dynamic object at the same place as this armature that is a static object at the same place as this object that is a dynamic object. So these three objects enters into collision each of the others and this is resulting with really strange behavior. So to prevent that, 
I'll take my player mesh and set it to no collision, my armature set it to no collision, and now if I start the game, whoa. If I start the game, you can see that I m can move around exactly as it was working before. So, everything is working fine, and this is the end of the first part. Let us move to the second part. Second part that was on the movement, the walk animation. So, to do the walk animation, we need to select our armature. And we want to play this animation every time we are holding the A or the D key. So to do that, I'll add two sensors. And I'll add the sensor by pressing Shift A while I'm in this window. Select sensor, select keyboard. Two times. The first one will be A, we'll look for the letter A. The second one will be D, we'll look for the letter D. Next. We want to add an action actuator that will play the action. And I want to connect, to connect these two keyboard sensors to the same controller. And I want this controller to be an OR controller. Because I want this action to place whatever, whenever I am holding the A or the D key. And I will select my walk animation. Walk animation that start at frame 0 and at frame 29. And I want to play it as a loop stop. And everything seems correct. So if I start the game right now by pressing P and moving, you can see that it is working, but every time I change my direction, it seems that my player is resetting the animation at 0. And the reason for that is very strange, and it is that this prior priority, I can't pronounce that word, that word, sorry, it seems that this priority is at the value of zero, and it seems that it is causing the problem. I don't really know why, I think it's a bug inside of Blender, since this layer was just added recently, and that the action actuator has a lot of modifications recently, so this might be a simple bug. But a priority of 1 solves all the problem. As you can see. Alright. And right now our player is walking in this direction, no matter if we are going in this direction or in this direction. And that is a problem, and we don't want that. We want our player to look to the left when going to the left, and look to the right when going to the right. And there won't be a lot of way to do that, however, the way I have chose to do it is by using a property that will remember if we are going to the left or to the right, and this property will play an animation. Well, in fact, will play two animations. One animation that will be look to the left, and one animation that will be look to the right, depending if it is true or false. So first of all, we will need to create those animations. And in order to create an animation on an armature, you need to go on a special mode that is called pose mode. An armature has three modes, and they are object mode, edit mode, or pose mode. Object mode is for moving the armature, like moving any object. Edit mode is for editing the armature, like editing any object and pose mode is to animating the armature. So, I'll go in pose mode by pressing this button and selecting pose mode, or you can do that by pressing control tab. And in pose mode, I want to unlink this animation and press new and create a new one that will be called left. I want to press this F button so that it will remember to not delete it when I will close Blender. And now what I want to do is to animate this bone right here. This bone is called my controller bone and is a bone that controls all the others. So if I move it, all the others will follow and if I rotate it, all the others will follow. Now you have to understand that in, at this point, it might differ, be different at the time you are looking 
this tutorial, but at my point, it seems that it is not possible to play two animations at the same time on a single object. However, we can play two animations different on a single armature as long as we don't play the animation on the same bone. And right now, all the animations I have made, the jump animation, the walk animation, the idle animation, only make these three bones move. So this bone isn't affected by any of, the, of those three animations, which means that if I animate it on the left and the right animation, it will control all the other bones and won't cause any problem because I won't be running two animation on the same object at the same time. Now it might be a bit confusing at the moment, but just remember that that this bone is controlling all the others and that it isn't affected by any other animation so that we are we will not be playing two animations at the same time on it. Okay, so enough talking. Let's create the animation. All I want to do is to select my bone and on my left animation I want to rotate it on this direction and I want it to rotate it on 180 degree then press I to insert a keyframe and I want to insert a rotation keyframe. Then I want to delete, uh, not delete, unlink this animation, create a new one that will be called right, press the F button and rotate it 180 degree again on the other direction and press I. To add a rotation keyframe. And now what I want to do is to create the property that will remember if we are looking to the left or to the right. So to do that I'll press this property, write left as the name, set it to boolean and let it at as false as default because as default our player is looking to the right. Next I want to change the value of this property depending of if I am pressing the A or D key. So what I'll do is I'll add two actuator property actuators. The top one will be left equal true and it will assign to the property left the value true. The second one will be left equal false and it will assign to the property left the value false. And I want to run the first, the first one when we press the A key and I want to run the second one when we press the D key. And if I press this A, this I button here, then press P to start the game, you can see at the top left that it is working correctly. Alright, the next step is to make the, this property play the two animations we have made. So to do that, we'll add a sensor property. Uh, where is it? Here it is and we'll add two actuators that will be our motion actuator action actuators sorry the first one will be called left we'll play the animation left and we'll play from frame 0 to frame 10 I'll change the priority to be something else than 0 and connect it to my property actuator and I want to run this action whenever our left property is true. So I'll let the evaluation type to be equal, select the property to be left, and the value to be true. And now what we want to do is that every time the left pro property is false, we want to play the second action that will be right, play the animation right, start frame 0 and frame 10, and priority something else than zero. So I want to play this right action whenever this left this actuator is false. And instead of creating another actuator property that look if the left property is equal to false, what I'll do is that I'll add an end controller. I will add an end controller. Ooh, sorry about that. 
And the reason I am adding a NAND controller is that if you go on Wikipedia, on the logic gate page, you can see that the NAND controller will be, that the output of the NAND controller will be true as long as one of the input has a false in it. So since this input will be false, it will turn this controller to be true, which will make rah, which will make this write action to play. So if I if I resume a bit, whenever whenever we press the A key we turn the left property to be true. Whenever we press the D key, we turn the left property to be false. If the left property is true, we play the action that is called left that will make our character looks that way. If the left property is false, we play the right action that will make our character look that way. And if I start the game right now by pressing P, ah, you can see that it kind of worked, but not really. And the reason for that is that right now, as you can see, the layer of our action here, that is walk, the layer is zero, and the layer of our left and right property is also, uh, action is also zero. So right now we are trying to play two animations on the same layer at the same time, on the same object, and we cannot do that. We need to play it on another layer. So what I'll do, I'll select my walk action, increase the layer to be 1, and now, if I press P, you can see that it works perfectly. However, it is a bit sharp, the transition, the transition between left and right is only doing it in one frame, and maybe we would like something more soft. So what I'll do, and to do that, we'll add a blending. And what blending does is that instead of playing this animation the moment this animation is true, it will take 10 frames to do it completely. So if I set 10 of the blending to the left and to the right, you can see that if I start the game, it, take, take, it takes 10 frames to my player to rotate. And that is much better. However, uh, the player is rotating the other side of the camera and we want it to rotate this side of the camera. So what we'll do is that we will go back into our right animation, top view, and we will rotate the base, the controller bone, 5 degrees towards the camera. Press E rotation, we'll do the same thing for the left, rotate it 5 degrees, E rotation, and since the two animation, the two actions are rotated a bit to the, towards the camera, it will be easier for the blending to rotate that way, so that's what it is going to do. And now I will unlink this action, press Alt R to nullify the rotation on the selection and I will press Control tab to quit the edit mode the pose mode, sorry. Zero to return in camera mode press P and now you can see that the character is rotating towards the camera and that the walk animation is working correctly. However, there is, there is one hidden problem and it is that if I go left Oh, yeah. And it is that if I go left and press D once, and I press D once, my character will be going to the left and walking to the right. And the reason for that is that when I press A, the reason for that is that when I press D, I change the property left to be false. And when I hold A, I don't change the left property to be true. I change the left property to be true and only when I press A. So to fix that, what I'll do is that I'll press this true trigger, true triggering pulse mode button. And what it will do is that it will set a positive pulse at every frame I am holding A or D, 
which means that every frame I am holding A or D, it will set left to be true or left to be false. And it will solve the problem. And the last thing we need to do in this part in order to complete it is to add an idle animation, an animation that will play whenever our player is not walking. So to do that, I'll press Shift A, Actuator, Action, and the action we want to play will be called idle, idle, it starts at the frame 0 and at the frame 20. Uh, we will give it a blending of 10. We will set it to a different par priority than 1. And the layer will be 0. Uh, no, the layer will be 1. Because we don't want to be on the same layer than the left or the right. And there won't be any problem with this layer. Because we will play the idle animation whenever we don't play the walk animation. So, as I told you, I want to play this idle animation whenever my character is not walking, so I want to play it whenever I am not pressing A or I am not pressing D. So what I'll do is that I'll add a NOR controller, and if we go back to Wikipedia, you can see that the NOR controller is true only if all the input are false. So, I'll connect this D keyboard and this A keyboard sensor to this NOR controller, connect this NOR controller to this idle, move it up a bit for better visibility, move this action a bit also, and now if we start the game engine, you can see that, oh, we have a problem, and it is that we need to be loop stop. And now you can see that we have some really strange problem. Um, ah, I want my left to be loop stop, and I want my right to be loop stop as well. And now, and now everything should work correctly. And you can see that the moment I am not pressing A or D, my character is playing the idle animation. And this is exactly what we want. So, our walk setup, or walk, walk setup is finally complete. And this is finally the end of the second part of this tutorial. Let's move on to the third part, that was the jump animation. And this uh, jump animation will be on another state, as we did for the jump in our player. So, I'll add, uh, so in order to go to the other state, we will look for a collision keyboard sensor, sorry, set to spacebar, name spacebar. And this actuator will fire uh, another scene, a state, state actuator, that do, that will change the state of our two first states. And I'll call it change 2. And in our second state, what we want to do is to add an always sensor that will be a trigger and that will fire an action that will be jump. that start at frame 0 and at, at frame 20 with a blending of 3 priorities something different than priority something different than 0 connect this trigger to this one and now if I press P you can see that when I press spacebar my character is jumping now we need to find a way to return to the first state and we need to find a way to play this animation a second time when we are doing our double jump. And the way I have found to that were that was working the best for me was using messages. And what it will what we will do is that this player hitbox object will send message to the armature 
whenever it is jumping a second time or whenever it is touching the ground. So I'll add two sensors, uh, no, two actuators, two message actuators, one that will be called jump, one that will be called ground, the jump will be sent to armature player, same thing for the ground, And I want to send this jump message whenever my character is jumping. So I'll connect this message actuator to this end controller that is controlling my jump. And I want to send this ground message whenever we are cha changing our state. So I'll, I'll connect this ground actuator to the same controller that is changing the state. Back to the armature, I will look for two message sensor. one that will be called ground um, no, jump, the first one will be called jump and the second one will be called ground the first one jump will play this animation again however, no, in fact it won't play the animation again we cannot play an animation, a play animation until it is already finished so what we need to do is to create another action that will be exactly the same however it will be on a higher layer so that it will play on top of it and it will replace it set the priority something else than 0 the blending to 3 and frame to be 20 and this jump right here is at the layer 0, this one is at the layer 2, so this one is at a higher layer and will replace this one. Okay, message ground state, this connect here, and this ground will fire a state actuator that will change the to first state call change 1 jump 2 and now everything seems to be correctly set it up and if I press P you can see that it works just fine however we have a problem and it is that if I jump while my character is in mid rotation my player will keep the mid rotation and it looks very bad and this is the only problem we have I think yep so in order to fix this problem what we will do is that we want our left and our right uh, our left and our right action to play whenever no matter if we are in a walk animation a walk state or in our jump state. So to do that, what we what we will do, we will throw them into another state that will be our always state. That will be a state that will be always true. And and so to do that, what I'll do is that I'll select the two controllers that controls the left and the right action, and press this button here and move them to this state. And it seems I have moved keyboard up, and I want to move it back to this layer. Here it goes. Okay. And now, but now if we start the game, this layer isn't activated by default. So in order to activate it by default, what we need to do is to go in this initial row here and shift click this button. And this will tell Blender that uh, we want the initial states of this object to be the first state and the 16th state that is our always state. 
our and now and now we will have another problem and it is that the layer here of left and right are zero and the first layer of our jump here is also zero so I'll switch it to one and now if I'm correct everything should work correctly yep everything is perfect okay so this is the end of this tutorial on animation a lot of stuff was covered and it might be possible you didn't understand everything the first shot so don't hesitate to listen it again or to experiment on your side to be sure to understand everything and I hope you have enjoyed this video that you have learned something from it I wish you a great day and I'll see you in part 7